In Psalm 55, we've been on this for a few weeks now, a series called Sustained, and we want to continue further into it this evening. Psalm 55 and verse 22. Psalm 55, 22 says, read it out loud with me. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast your burden on the Lord. As who does that? I, God's not going to do that. He told me to do it. Right? And if I'll do that, that comes first, doesn't it? Yes. If, if and when I do that, he said he's going to do something. Mm -hmm. yes. What's he going to do? Sustain. He shall sustain you. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Another translation said it like this. Put your cares on the Lord, the BBE says, and he will be your support. He will support you. God's Word translation says, turn your burdens over to the Lord and He'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. NIV said, turn your worries over to the Lord, He'll keep you going. Mm -hmm. Willie, if you, if you look up this word that's translated sustain, it means to keep, it means to nourish, to feed, to provide, to guide, to uphold. Sounds like He's taking care of you that's right. in every way. He's keeping you. Hmm? How many would confess and say, God's keeping me? He's keeping me. Well, how'd you make it this far? <laughs> but God keeping a person is not all up to God. Obviously, a lot of people on the planet are not being kept. Hmm? Their, their needs are not met. Spiritually, Solically, mentally, physically, financially. There's a lot of people whose needs are not being met. There's a lot of Christians whose needs are not being met. Is it because God is not able to meet all of our needs? No. He has to pick some of us. No. <laughs> and the rest, sorry. We ran out before we got to you. Mm -mm. That's not true. Is it because it's just not God's will? For everybody's needs to be met. Some, he wills for them to live very comfortably and even lavishly. And others, he wills for them to live in a cardboard box and, and basically almost starve every day. And some do starve. But that's the will of God. We don't understand it. His ways are mysterious. Religion teaches this. This is taught over pulpits in some form or version. But it's not true. I said it's not true. It's God's will to keep everybody. But it's not all up to Him whether you're kept or not. And that's where you run into the religious tradition. We, we just poked that old holy cow right there. Did you hear her move? Move! <laughs> Did you feel it? Uh, hold on, preacher. God is in control of everything. He's sovereign. Saying it like that, it just ain't true. God is not controlling everybody and everything. He made beings in His likeness and image that have the ability to think and understand and choose. And he's not making us choose right. We do have a free will. And all of the pain and the anguish and the evil is, that's on the planet and happening on the, and all in the world right now is because man has a free choice and has chosen wrongly. And God didn't make us choose wrong, so it's not his fault, the things that are happening. Now, he's got a plan, and it has worked, and it is working, and it will work. Hmm? But it's up to you and I how much we're going to be a part of that plan. And uh, here's something, it took, it took me decades to learn this. 
I've, I've learned some things back years ago that weren't right about God's sovereignty. And there were even some things in my personal life and ministry, I thought, well, now, God said it's supposed to be this way, but then people didn't do what he told them to do. I thought, well, somebody must have missed it here. Maybe we missed it that they were supposed to do it. And, and one, one time the Lord had to say, to, he had to speak to me and said, I can do things more than one way. <laughs> that was a great revelation for me. I can do things more than one way. That includes I can do things, if this person chooses not to do it, I can do it with somebody else. Right. His plan is going to get done. Yes. Hmm? Yes. But whether you or I are part of it is not set in stone. We do have a choice and he's not going to make us do it, even if it's his plan. Hmm? Now, if this, if this sounds new to you or if it sounds wrong to you, don't just throw it away. We spent uh, weeks and weeks on a series that we called You Choose, and we went through a ton of Scripture. And if, you, if you're serious about it, go get that. Download it. It won't cost you anything. If you're in the building, get you a hard copy. It won't cost you anything. And, and, and go prove me wrong. Go through all the Scriptures. And prove, prove us wrong on it. I think if, if you'll be open, you might have another idea. An example that the Lord gave me about that was when you just got through reading it. He brought the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage. And uh, he came down in fire on the mountain. And among other things, he gave them the Ten Commandments. And one of the first things that he, he told them was, uh, you'll have no other gods besides me and you don't make any images none and all the people said oh whatever the Lord says yes 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 we'll do it and less than two months later have you read it yes. less than two months later they made a gold calf and said here O Israel is your God." And it made God angry. Hmm? And you know what he said? He told Moses, leave me alone. And I'll destroy them. And I will make of you a great people. This is the, this is the passage the Lord gave me when I, I, I was perplexed about some things. I said, now Lord, if that's you, how can this be changed now? And this is going to go another way. He said, I, that was my people. I brought them out. But I told Moses, I'll do it with you. We won't use any of them. Did he say it or not? Yes. I, will, I will raise up of you a great people. And, and man, Moses, he, had, he went to plead in their case. He said, God, uh, give them another chance. Didn't he? I mean, he, he went to pleading for them. And thank God he did. The Lord's merciful. But what you can see is the Lord can do things more than one way. It's not set in stone the way a lot of preachers and theologians would have you believe. We really do have a free will. Hmm? And even though it's the plan and will of God, we can choose not to do it. God could, he could have intended on using us in this. Hmm? But right here. If he wanted a church in Sarasota like this church, but Keith Moore had never said yes to the call of God. Hmm? If God wanted a church here like this in Sarasota, there would be one. Amen. Keith wouldn't be a part of it. You'd know somebody else's name. Even though he intended to use me before I was born. So don't, don't believe this stuff about everything that's happening is God's will. There's a whole lot of stuff that's happening that's not God's will. But it is true that God's plan is going to be completed. Hmm? And, if, and if you won't do it, 
Somebody else will. Mm -hmm. Somebody will step up and get your reward. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Don't you remember the Lord said one time, they, they told him, make those people hush up and quit that. He said, if they, sh if they hush, the rocks will cry out. Yes. Didn't he say that? Yes. Praise is going to come. Uh -huh. But how am I going to say, no rock's going to do my praising, and nobody else is going to get my reward. Right. No. We're going to be on the job. We're going to stay with him. And if you'll stay with him, he's never going to leave you. He will sustain you. He will keep you. Something to think about. Go with me, please. To First Peter, the first chapter. First Peter one and verse four. First Peter one and four. It says we we have an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through. Faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You'll see this in a number of different places, this, this idea, this concept, that we are kept by two things, not just one. We're kept by the power of God, but it's what? Through our faith, which answers why a lot of people are not being kept. If it was just by the power of God, everybody would be kept. Hmm? Same thing is true. The power of God keeping you is a manifestation of grace. And if everything is all and only by the grace of God, then everybody will be saved. Regardless of what they believe or don't believe if it's just by grace. Hmm? Mm -hmm. But is that true? Yeah. We're not just saved by grace. We're saved by grace mm -hmm. through faith. Mm -hmm. And so whatever affects your faith is going to affect how much grace mm. you live in. Grace is God's part. Faith is our part. We don't need to be working on God's part. He's got his part well in hand. Mm -hmm. And he's already bought and paid for every, and, and by his great grace made everything available to us. But we will enjoy none of it unless we access it, and I'm quoting scripture now, by faith. Grace is accessed by faith. Hmm? Will everybody be saved? No. I, I hope more people wind up being saved than we think. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah. But I got to come back to Scripture. Mm -hmm. Jesus said there are few that would be saved. Mm -hmm. hmm? Broad is the way that leads to destruction and many that go in it. Straight and narrow is the way that leads to salvation and few there are that find it. Did the Lord say it or not? Yes. And the question, the reason he said that is somebody asked him, are there few that will be saved? And basically he said, yes, there are few. Now, what is there, seven, eight billion people on the planet? And if you talk about people that have already lived and people that are going to live, let's say 10 billion human beings, 3% would be a few. That's 300 million people. But still, compared to 10 billion, so there's going to be a lot of people in heaven. But the sad part is there's going to be a whole lot of folks that are not. How can I believe something else? when Jesus said what he said. Mm -hmm. Now people come up with all kind of stuff, but if it's contrary to scriptures, you best not believe it. Mm -hmm. If it's contrary to what Jesus said. No, you got, you got to believe. I said you have to believe. Jesus said go into all the world, preach the good news, Amen. right? To everybody, every creation, every creator, every being on the planet, preach the good news to them, and they'll all be saved. Didn't say that. 
didn't say that. He said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not will be condemned or damned. Do you believe the Bible? Yes. Do you believe the Scriptures? <laughs> didn't intend to get into all this either. <laughs> but uh, sometimes people, they, they mean well and they, they you know, they, they, they want to make everything all inclusive no matter what you do. But you've got to come back to the Bible. You've got to come back to the Scriptures. And I have nobody in mind. Nobody. I really don't. But I believe what Jesus said more than anybody else I know. How about you? you, you believe, you, are you the same? We're kept by the power of God through faith. So it's not just up to the power of God whether we're kept or not. Our faith is a factor. It's not works. It's not dead works. It's living faith. Now go with me please to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. I like faith. And I'm in good company. Because God likes faith, doesn't he? Yes. It's impossible. Now just think about that phrase. Right. Mm -hmm. To please him mm -hmm. without faith. Mm -hmm. So faith is not optional. Mm -hmm. He that comes to God must mm -hmm. believe mm -hmm. that he is, and he must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. you got to believe he's a good God. Did you reach out to him? He responds. Right? You believe him? He does something for you. He's not some can't be touched creator that made it and gave it a spin and barely checks in on it once in a while. No, he's a good God. Right? And we have a great high priest that's passed into the heavens. Right? Who became a man, lived as a man. You can't say nobody knows. He knows. He was here. Right? He experienced it all. He was tempted in all points, just like us, yet without sin, proving it could be done. Mm -hmm. So anytime you want to try to tell the Father, Lord, it's too much, I can't do it, he'll point to Jesus. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, somebody says, yeah, but that's, that's Jesus. Yeah, but he did it as a man. He didn't do it in omnipotence. He didn't do it as God. He did it as a man. Emptied himself. The Bible, Philippians says, laid aside his mighty weight and glory and became like other men. Somebody said, how did he do that? He's God. <laughs> Psalm, did you find it? You better find it before I preach some different sermons here. <laughs> I got about five churning at the same time. What, what Psalm did I tell you? 37 is the right one. He said, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. I'm going to read several verses here, so just keep on clicking. They'll soon be cut down like the grass in winter as the green herb. Never get to looking at people that don't believe in God and think, well, look at them. They're doing good. Why can't I do as good as they do? That's foolish thinking. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall you dwell in the land and verily you shall be fed. Somebody said out loud, I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to do good. And I'm going to dwell in the land. And I'm going to be fed. I'm going to eat. My kids are going to eat. My grandkids are going to eat. My dog and my parakeet. Huh? God's, God's going to sustain me. Keep reading. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Now, now, he just got through talking about eating and a place to live. He's talking about these kind of things. God will give you some things you absolutely do not need. The only purpose they serve in life is you enjoy them. I got some stuff in my house. Serves no purpose at all. Except I, I think it's pretty. I like looking at it. Hmm? Did the Bible say God gives us richly all things to enjoy? Huh? 
Jesus said, the thief comes not before to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The Amplified says, have and enjoy life to the full until it overflows. That's a God this world does not know. All they know is a mean, judgmental idea of a God. They don't know him. He's a good God. He'll give you some nice stuff. He'll bless you. Is that right? Yeah, he will. Yeah. <laughs> give you those high count sheets. What is that? that? <laughs> give you those nice dishes. But will he? Good silverware. Will he? Yes, will. Give you a new car. Of course. New car. Well, all this technology and these new cars, is that only for the devil's crowd? Is that only for unbelievers? Trust in him, he'll bring it to pass. Somebody say, he'll bring it to pass. He'll bring it to pass. Bring what to pass? Well, the desires of your heart and the ways that you've committed on him and what you eat and where you live. He'll bring it to pass. Keep reading, keep reading. Verse 6. He'll bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Keep going. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in the way. You must say, look at that man. He's mean as a devil. and got all kind of money. Well, if I just had the money he throws away, I'd be, if I, if I, if I just had the, the paintings he's got in the wall, quit coveting his stuff. You got a God who's more than enough to take care of you. Get your mind off of him or her. What are they to you? Rest in the Lord. Wait on him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Don't, don't say one word about all the money they got or they're making. It's a flash in the pan. Hmm? Keep reading. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Now this is talking about getting mad about seeing that. Did you see what that guy, he paid $2 million for that car. That's just ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You know what those people could, they could use that over here. And they could use that. That's actually being hypocritical. That's right. hmm? mm-hmm. And besides that, that's, what's that to you? That's nothing to you. You don't even know these people probably. Right? right. What's it to you? <laughs> we best follow God. Yeah. And quit looking at other folks. And don't get angry. Don't fret yourself. Some people wind up doing evil because they get so stirred up about this stuff. They say and do things they shouldn't do. Keep going. Evildoers will be cut off. Those that wait upon the Lord, they'll inherit the earth. Amen. You know, we should relax. Yes. The whole planet is ours. God has already deeded the whole planet to believers. Yeah. It's my planet. Talk about real estate. (laughs) And he's going to fix it for us. He's going to fix it for us first. And there's going to be no more curse. No more hot weather. That's right. No more cold weather. No more earthquakes. No more hurricanes. No more. He's going to fix it all. None of this was the way it was originally supposed to be. It's all been affected by the curse, by sin. By the God of this world, the enemy. Yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. Don't get upset about them. They're not even going to be around very long. You'll, later on, you'll diligently consider his place. you go, where are they? You can't find them. They're gone. Keep going. But the meek. Is that you? Being meek is being like Jesus. Humble. Trusting in him. Waiting on him. Trusting in him. They'll inherit the earth. Come on, sit out loud. I'm inheriting the earth. And they'll delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. The Lord will laugh at him. Why? He's getting so mad. He's upset. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. Can he stop the plan of God? Is he bigger than God? If the Lord laughs about it, what should you do? You should join the Lord. 
How many know if somebody laughs, it can be rude not to laugh with them? Can it? Right? Let's say somebody really important is in the room talking to you and they laugh and you just sit there and go, hmm. Not laughing can be very rude, right? It can make it very awkward. Now, when, when the Almighty laughs, that's your cue, brother. Come on, are y'all with me? When the Almighty laughs, when the Almighty laughs, it's funny whether you know it or not. <laughs> you just, if you got to Revelation, you'd be one of the la- loudest ones laughing. If you don't think it's funny, it's just because you've got so much darkness and confusion about you. <laughs> if God says it's funny, just start laughing by faith. Because it is. And when you see it, you'll really laugh. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. And all of the loud talk and the slanders and the threatenings and stuff, it just is going to come to nothing. We we need to get our our, our vision and our eyes opened up to the way God sees things. Thinking on these little two-year, 50-year, 100-year scale things and thinking these things are so big and so important when it's not. When you back off and you see it from God's eye, even if it's another 150 years, it's almost done Mm -hmm. to Him. It's just, it's it's done anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're going to do this, they're going to do that, and it's going to cause problems for five years. God goes, ha, 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 ha. (laughs) <laughs> and what do you do? Come on, help me out. What do you do? <laughs> you say, ha, 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 ha. Even if you have to do it by faith. <laughs> it just made me so mad. Maybe it's caused me so many problems. And, it's, and I just, and it's giving me a headache. And it's causing me ulcers. And God laughs at it. If we become more like him, we rest. Did you see that word earlier? Rest. You rest. You quit being so intense. So many things that people think are such a big deal and so important, they just are so not. They're not. The wicked have drawn out the sword. They've bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy to slay such as be of upright conversation. Oh, they're bad, they're bad. But their sword's going to enter their own heart and their bows are going to be broken. That's how they're going to end up. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. Don't you get to looking at them and think, oh, I got all these billions and I'm having to believe God for this or that. Forget about them. If they don't know God, they got bigger troubles than you ever had. Hmm? They do. The arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. All through this psalm, you'll see the idea of the Lord supporting his people and taking care of his people. It just gets stronger and stronger. The Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. We got to think long term about this. Well, I, I, this is not that nice and that's not good. Hey, we already know your good stuff is in heaven. Don't get so hung up about this. Yeah, believe for some, everything you need, but don't, don't get hung up on that. The good stuff you're going to find out about later. They'll not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. That's us he's talking about. That's believers. That's the meek. That's the ones that trust in him. Now what's days of famine? What's a modern equivalent of day of famine? We'd call it economic slump and crash and recession and right? Or worse, depression, whatever it is. Even if nobody is eating and getting something, we're going to eat. Huh? Now, now, why would we be kept? We said two things. The power of God and what? Our faith. And you can see why that, that element goes missing all too quickly. Even among Christians. You say something like that, I'm, I'm going to eat. And my needs are going to be met. Right? right? And these churches' needs are going to be met. Right. And the ministry's needs are going to be met no matter what happens. Right. No matter what happens in Florida or the U.S. or the world. Right. This is, well, 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 you'll see. Yeah, we'll see. 
If you say, well, you just, you just never know, then you won't be kept. Even if you're genuinely born again, even if you love the Lord, why? Because you don't believe it. And you don't give him anything to work with. How's he going to keep you and you don't believe him without keeping everybody that don't believe him? How would he be fair? If somebody is going to starve because they wouldn't believe him, he's not going to change his word and do something for you when you don't believe him. Wouldn't be fair. Wouldn't be right. You need to make up your mind. I'm going to trust him. Hmm? You know, how could we know if you trust in him or not? It'll come out of your mouth. I said it'll come out of your mouth. Huh? Instead of sitting there and worrying and crying and being scared and this is happening over here and this is happening over here, you're going to cast your burden over on the Lord. Come on, you, you're going to throw it over on the Lord and you're going to say it may happen to a thousand over here and ten thousand over here but it won't happen to me. I will be fed. My kids will be fed. My grandbabies will be taken care of. Come on, are you listening? We will have a place to live. We will have good clothes to wear. We will have a good way of getting around. My whole life long. Long as I live. Which is going to be a while. Now, if you don't believe it enough to say it like that, you're in danger of your needs not being met. The wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord will be like the fat of lambs. They'll cons be consumed into smoke. They'll, they'll consume away. The wicked borrows and pays not again, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. Now, that's another reference to let you know they didn't tell those people they were going to pay back the things they were borrowing from them. That'd be contrary to Scripture. Such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. They that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And that's not according to how good you've done. He's made you righteous by his blood. He delights in his way. Come on, somebody said out loud, the Lord's ordering my steps. He's directing my paths. I've had more than one person before uh, tell me desperately, Brother Keith, Pray for me. I got this decision coming up, and I, I, I've prayed and I've prayed, and some of them said I fasted. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And, I, and man, if I, if I go the wrong way, if I do the wrong thing, this could really mess up my life. I, uh, pray for me. Pray for me. And, I, and, and more than once I've said, well, would, will you do what I tell you to do? And they said, well, I, I don't know. I said, if I can, I said, yeah, you can do it if you will. And they said, what? I said, quit saying that. Right. Yeah. Quit saying what? Ah, oh, you're going to correct my confession. This ain't just about uh, your words. It's about what you believe. Amen. And your words are telling off that you don't believe right. Did the Bible say, I can't hear from God? No. Or ever tell you to say you couldn't hear from God or any form of that? Didn't he say, my sheep, come on, my sheep, know my voice. And a stranger's voice, they won't follow. Did he tell you to go around all the time saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I tell you how I learned this. I, I was several years into the ministry, something came up. They said, what are we going to do about this? I said, I don't know. Uh, where are we going to get the money for this? I said, I don't know. And, and all through the day, it seemed like it came up 25 times. And, and well, what about this? And what are we going to do about this? I said, I don't know. I don't know. I guess the Lord got tired of hearing it. I said it again, I don't know. And, and I don't mean to hurt out voice outside, but inside me, he said, no, and you won't find out like that. Right. What am I saying? I don't know. I don't know. I believe I don't know. I'm saying I don't know. What's coming to pass in my life? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's not just about getting a perfect thing to say. It's about what you believe inside. Mm -hmm. And your words are revealing what you believe. I, I caught it. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord for his mercy. I went to the scripture. In 1 John it says, you have an unction of the Holy One and you know. Amen. You know all things. Right. That doesn't mean you're omniscient, but you know everything you need to know by the manifestation of the anointing that causes you to know. And my sheep know my voice and a stranger's voice they won't follow. And this is one of the verses. And the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. So I begin to talk like that. The Lord's ordering my steps. 
Amen. The Lord is ordering my steps. Yes, and your, your head will say, it don't seem like it, say, shut up. The Lord's ordering my steps, and I have the anointing inside me and on me, and I know what to do. I will know what to do. I will do the right thing. He's leading me and guiding me, and in your soul and your feelings and other things will say, you don't know. Say, shut up. I do. By the anointing in me, I know, and I will know. Amen. Well, what if you do the wrong thing? I will do the right thing because he's leading me. He's guiding me. He's my shepherd. I'm his sheep. I know his voice. Amen. What a difference from saying, I can't hear from him. I've prayed and prayed, and I just can't seem to hear from him. That's contrary to the Bible. Your words are stout against him. It's a refusal to believe what he said, either through ignorance or on purpose. Don't fight him. Don't disagree with him. Work with him. I can almost hear the Lord saying to the whole body of Christ, work with me here. Work, would you ju work with me? No, don't say that. No, don't believe that. I told you, work with me. Would you just work with me here? Because is he able or not to get you anything you need? How hard is it for him? I don't care if it was a trillion dollars. He could get it to you before the sun went down and not even make a phone call. Do you believe it? Or not? He creates planets. He's the Almighty. That's not the limitation. That's not the hindrance. The Bible said concerning the Israelites we were talking about, they turned and limited the Holy One of Israel. Can you limit God? A lot of theologians would say no, but you'd be fighting that scripture. You can't limit him who he is in himself, but you can sure limit what he can do for you. Right. You can limit him in your life. Let's take the limitations off. Come on, somebody say the steps of a good man. He's made me good by his blood. He's ordering my steps. He's directing my paths by the anointing. I will know what to do. I am his sheep. I know his voice. A stranger I won't follow. I'll do the right thing. We'll go the right way. He's leading me. He's helping me. In Jesus' name. Now don't say anything contrary to that. Nothing. No matter what you see or hear or feel, stay right on the word. 24, keep going. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him. This is the same kind of word, uphold, sustain, support. Even if you get off, even if you mess up, it ain't over. I said it's not over. You're not down and out. You're just down for a few moments. Because the Lord upholds him with his hand. Come on, somebody say it out loud. I will make it. Even if I fall. The Lord will pick me back up. He's upholding me. He's sustaining me. He's keeping me. Now look at this. I've been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. What does that mean? You've been sustained. You've been kept. You've been provided for. Is it possible to make it the rest of your life? And be well provided for yes. the rest of your life. Yes. What's the danger? The danger is not that it might not be God's will. The danger is not that God might not be able to do it. What's the danger? The danger is getting scared. Getting in fear. Doubting. Not believing. Not doing what he told you to do. That could shut the door. That could hinder. That could limit. That could restrict. He goes on to say, he's merciful. He lends. Sounds like you got extra. His seed is blessed. That's your kids and your kids' kids. Depart from evil, do good, dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves judgment and forsakes not his saints. He's not going to forsake us. They are preserved forever. Does this sound like the Lord's keeping you? But the seed of the wicked will be cut off. Skip down to 39, 39 for time's sake. All of it's good, but you, you see me, I'm trying to preach on every verse. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. 
and the Lord will help them and deliver them. He will deliver them from the wicked and save them. Why? 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 Because they trust in him. Why does he do so much more for some people than for other people? One reason. One. Because they trust him. And these didn't. And that's it. It is no more complicated than that. I know a lot of folks don't like it that black and white. But it is the truth. If you'll believe God, he will do anything for you that he's ever done for anybody else. He's no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. Has he ever kept anybody? Their whole life. Has he ever blessed people? Even made them rich? Them and their kids and helped them? Did he ever do it for any of his people? Yes. Would he do it for you? Yes. If you'll believe him like they did. So you got, a, you got a lot of church going people. They want what other people got, but they don't want to do what they did. Well, that doesn't work. Somebody say, I'm going to trust him. And I will be taken care of. My needs will be met. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. In Genesis, uh, don't necessarily turn to all these. Uh, I'll just mention them to you briefly. Jacob, when he was, uh, you know, he, he snuck in and got the blessing from Esau, who was the firstborn. And that wasn't right. But he valued it more than his brother did. And uh, when uh, Isaac spoke over him, he blessed him. Somebody say blessed him. Blessed. And the scripture says it's the blessing of the Lord that enriches, that makes rich. And when Esau came in and said, well, you, you blessed him, uh, bless me, don't you have a blessing for me? And he said, no. He said, uh, I, I've made him your Lord and all his brethren have I given to him for servants? And with corn and wine I have sustained him. That's Genesis 27, 37. With corn and wine I have sustained him. Now, see, a lot of folks don't think the blessing is as real as it is. They would think, oh, well, he came in and lied to me, so no, we'll just nix that and just say, no, that doesn't, that doesn't make any difference. And come over here and I'll bless you. Because to them, blessing is some kind of little weak, feeble prayer that didn't mean anything anyway. No, this is so real that once it was released, he said, no, that's done. And he is sustained for the rest of his life with uh, corn, bread, whatever he needs. He's sustained. What was it that caused that to come on him? The blessing. The blessing. Now, when Esau heard all this and saw it, it finally dawned on him. It made him so mad. He's planning on killing Jacob. He's going to wait a few days. He figures his daddy's going to be dead, and he's going to kill him. He's going to take him out. And his mama knows that. And so they send him away. They send him to Uncle Laban's house, where he's going to get to reap from all that lying and cheating he's done. Because <laughs> Laban is even trickier than he is. But when he's out there by himself, away from home for the first time, doesn't know if he'll ever see home again, he prayed in Genesis 28. He said, Lord, if you'll be with me and keep me in the way that I go and you'll give me bread to eat and, and clothes to put on so that I come to my father's house in peace, Genesis 28, 21, then you'll be my God. And this stone that I've said will be for God's house. And all that you give me, I will surely give the tenth to you. I'm going to tithe. Now, he's got nothing but a stick. He's on his own. A couple of decades later, he comes back. He's two bands. He's got herds and flocks and, and all kind of, today we'd say employees. And, and he's become a wealthy man. In a matter of 20 some years. And at the end of his life, in Genesis 48, 15, I want you to hear what he said. Genesis 48, 15, when he's blessing his, uh, his family, 
He blessed Joseph and he said, God, Genesis 48, 15, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. The God which fed me all my life long unto this day. Did he believe in the blessing? Yes. He left with a stick, a walking stick. And he became two big bands, groups of people. And a wealthy man. Hallelujah. All his life long. When he left home with that stick, he didn't know it. But that's as poor as he'd ever be. He just increased, 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 increased the rest of his life. And now he's old, he's aged, he's satisfied. Does it sound, sound like our Psalm 91? Yeah. Huh? Has he had a few scrapes through life? Were there some, some situations that look touch and go? <laughs> huh? Look like he might not make it through, make it out. But he did. The plague didn't get him. The enemies and the arrows didn't get him. Come on, does it sound familiar? The pestilence, the problems, the attacks, none of it got him. God sustained him, and he was fed and cared for his whole life long. With long life, God satisfied him and showed him how he could save, showed him his salvation. How about you? How about you? Hmm? Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thanks be to God. God had said to him in Genesis 28, 15, we see the fulfillment of what God told him. Before all this happened, he said, I'm with you and I will keep you in all places where you go. What did he say he'd do? I'll keep you and I'll bring you again to this land. I will not leave you till I have done that which I've spoken to thee of. I'm going to take care of you. He's a young man, just a beginning of his life, out there in the middle of the wilderness at night with his stick. <laughs> and how many know whether he realized it or not, he's a rich man? Is he or not? Because yes. God himself has said, hmm, I'm going to take care of you. How many know if you really believe that, you could just relax? Amen. For the rest of your life. Amen. Have you ever heard the term set for life? Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I wish somebody would put $100 million in my account and set me for life. If they put $300 million, you would not be set for life. Banks can fail. Institutions can collapse, economies, national economies. I mean, you can be 300 million rich today and have nothing next week. That's right. Or you can do it yourself, make dumb mistakes in bad investments, and on and on and on. That's right. I don't care how much money you got in the bank, you're not set for life because there is nothing down here 100% safe and sure. I don't care what they said, it's not. Oh, but, but, oh, come on, somebody help me preach this a little bit. But, if the creator of the heavens and the earth tells you, I got you, I got you, I'm going to take care of you, I've got you, I've got you. I've got you from now on. <laughs> I got you. I'm going to keep you. Now, don't you worry your little head. You cast every care and every worry and every fear and every doubt on me. You just don't worry about one thing, and I will sustain you. I will sustain you the rest of your life. And if you say, 
That sounds good, Lord. I, yeah. But man, have you seen the interest rates? Have you seen? <laughs> and, and did you see the news? That company collapsed and this, and, and I'm so concerned about this. And you're, you're in trouble. I said, you're in trouble because you're doing the one thing that could prevent him from doing it. Hmm? All the devils in hell couldn't prevent him from doing it. All the men with all their mistakes on the earth can't prevent him from doing it. But you refusing to believe him and choosing to worry and doubt and fear instead of trust him can keep it from happening. Can you see why hardness of heart and unbelief made Jesus angry? Hmm? One of the biggest things that would anger him is not being able to bless you. Right? What would anger love? Hmm? What would anger love? What would make what would make a parent more upset than anything? Not being able to take care of your kid. Right? What, what could be more upsetting? Yeah. More irritating? Mm -hmm. more, how many know the Almighty does not get angry about nothing? Mm -hmm. Trivial, unimportant stuff. If he's angry about something, there's still reason why. Substantial reason why. Let's remove every hindrance. Hallelujah. Let's remove yes. every limitation. Hallelujah. And let's trust him. Amen. Come on, somebody say, I trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. I trust you. I trust you. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I feel. I don't care how it has been. I don't care how it happens to somebody else. I will be taken care of. You told me you would. And I believe it. I believe it. The rest of my life. We're going to eat well. Wear well. Live well. Drive well. We're going to have everything we need the rest of my life. How many believe it's the will of God for you, just like Jacob, to come to the end of a long, fulfilling life and be able to look somebody in the eye and say, I want you to know. That's not old enough. I want you to know. How old is he? I don't know. He passed 100 a long time ago. God has kept me every day of my life. He kept my spirit. He kept my soul. He kept my body. He kept my peace. He kept me in plenty. I've not lacked. I've been blessed. And I've been able to bless others and help others on the right and the left. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. I can see right now you're going to have to come back. <laughs> can you come back? Because we... Uh, one of the big things I wanted to get to, I, I can't do it justice by rushing through it. You got to come back, Amen. and we got to start fresh on it. Amen. And uh, this is this is shouting ground right here. We don't need to rush past this. We need to shout plenty right here. Hmm. The rest of your life. The rest of my life. Where's the security in you being well kept the rest of your life? What's the key? What's the key? It's not whether it's God's will or not. It is the will of God. It's not whether God would be able to do it. He's well able. It's easy for him. Right? He had that plan for them four centuries. Right? He already had it in motion. When he told Abraham to go up and offer up his son, the ram was on the way. Right? God's never behind. He's never having to figure out, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now they did what? Come here, angels. We got to, come on, we got to. Never. Never. 
Never. Where's the danger? What is the da What should you not be afraid of, but what should you be concerned about and ever watchful about? Me doubting him. Hmm? Me holding on to fears and cares and worries and, and choosing not to trust him because that can shut the door on my provision. Go with me to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Oh, glory to God. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. I'm, I'm moving, I'm moving too fast. Go to Psalms on your way to uh, Hebrews. If you believe this, if I believe this, our worrying days are over. Huh? Is it true or not? The only reason you worry is because you don't believe. That's it. We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, but he does. We don't know who's going to do what and what's going to go up and what's going to go down. And yeah, but he already does. He does. And he said he's going to keep us. He told us he's going to take care of us. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Does this sound like you're scared and worried? No, it does not. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Plural. To hear some folks think, there's one benefit. You don't have to go to hell. You get to go to heaven. And thank God for that one. Now, if that's the only one you had, that's a good one. That's, a, that's the biggie. But there's more than one benefit of knowing him and serving him. There are many benefits. And we need to remember all of them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> benefit number one, verse three. He forgives all your iniquities. How many, how many, how many? All, all. all. Benefit number two. He heals all your diseases. Come on, somebody sit out loud. He forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. What about if 20 years from now there was something serious? You get healed of that too? Huh? What if 30 years from now uh, there's something, a problem, symptoms of something nobody ever heard of? It's something new. There's no cure for it. Well, there is a cure for it. We know him. His name is Jesus. He is the true cure all. Good for what ails you. Come on, sit out loud. He heals all my disease. He redeems your life from destruction. How many believe that's every day? That's every day, every day. We've seen it in other passages. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Does that sound like God's forgetting about you or is not invited? No, he's watching you over you every step. Tender mercies, loving kindness. He satisfies your mouth with good things. Somebody say good things, good things, good things, good things. So that your youth is renewed. Like the eagles, you're always getting your second win. And your third and your fourth. You're always, you know, you slow down a little bit and things low a little bit. And, and then God zaps you and you go, whoo, yeah, yeah, come on. And then you get, you get encouraged and you get refreshed and you get renewed. Yes, yes, yes. That's how you just keep going. Yes. 
and keep going year after year and decade after decade until you have run your whole race and finished your whole course and you get to say uh, with Jacob, God took care of me my whole life long. Go to Philippians. I think just a couple of scriptures here and we'll, we'll close for tonight. But you got to come back now. You don't want to miss this other part of this. this Philippians 4 and 6. Philippians 4, 6. Try not to worry. Do your best. <laughs> huh? What did it say? Be careful for what? Nothing. No, what does nothing mean? Nothing. What does nothing mean? If you're careful about something, you're not careful for nothing. How many things is it okay to worry about? None. Fret about? None. You know why people are worrying about stuff? Usually because they can't do anything about it. So if you can't do anything about it, why would you worry about it? Unless worrying would do something. How many ever paid a bill by worrying about it? Ever, ever fixed a problem in your own body by being scared and worrying? And you thought, man, this is getting better. The more I worry about this. <laughs> huh? Actually, the opposite is true. Right? Well, if we know that, why would we keep doing it? Millions are. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall, shall keep. Is he going to keep you? Yes. He's going to keep you. Your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Now let's just, aren't we seeing the same principle over and over again? Is he going to keep you automatically no matter what you do? No. What's the first part of this? You have to cast your cares over on him. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to make the decision. Yes. I'm not going to fret and worry about this. Yeah. Right. What are you going to do instead of that? I'm going to trust him. Yeah. Right? 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 It's going to be all right. Yeah. Our needs are going to be met. Mm -hmm. yes. Our bills are going to be paid. Yes. Huh? Some have said, I've been young, now I'm old. Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken. Yes. Yes. Now him out having to beg. What's righteous in the eyes of God? Believing Him. What's right in His eyes? Trust me. Trust me. I told you. I will take care of you. Oh, somebody's getting it. I can, I can sense it. Did He tell you, I told you? Trust me. I will take care of you. Tell me the appropriate response. Come on, help me out. The appropriate response. Tell Him. Tell him, I do trust you. I do trust you. How do we know you trust him? You don't worry. You, you resist fear. You quit worrying. You quit fretting. If you're still worrying, you don't trust him. Now come on, think about it. I, I, I'm a man. I'm limited. But if I had the money and you had a, a financial problem and I came and told you as your pastor, I said, I got the money. I'm going to take care of it. Rest your mind. I'm going to take care of it when the bank opens, when the place opens, we're going to take care of it. And yet you couldn't sleep all night <laughs> worrying about that thing. And you talk to your friends and say, well, Brother Keith said that he'd do it, but you think he will? I just don't know. I, I hope so. Why are you still worrying? If you, if you trusted me, you, you'd sleep like a baby. Even though you've seen nothing, you've heard nothing, you got no paperwork, why? Because you say, well, Brother Keith said he'd do it. He'll do it. So this thing is done. Why should I lose sleep about this? If you trust you stop worrying. 
If you're still worrying, you don't trust. Mm -hmm. Don't trust. What did the Lord tell you? Have, haven't we seen verse after verse after verse? Have we or not? Amen. Have we? What did he tell you? Amen. I'm your God. Amen. I'm El Shaddai. Amen. I'm your big daddy. Right. I'm your healer. Yes. Huh? Oh I'm your righteousness. Yes. I'm your peace. Yes. I'm everything you need. Yes. And you're the apple of my eye. Yes. You're my redeemed one. You're my precious one. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to uphold you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to protect you. Yes. Yes. Can you believe it, saints? Come on. Can, can you believe it? Can you believe it? Oh, yeah. Billions on the planet won't. They don't and they won't. And sadly, they are outside his care, which is why all the terrible things are happening like they are. Amen. But do you believe, we've seen it in the Bible, in the midst of collapse and total devastation, has God ever been able to keep a man or a woman and hold them in the palm of his hand? Yeah. I don't care if you're standing in the middle of the fiery furnace. Yeah. There was so hot that the people that threw you in got killed. If you trust God and he's in there with you, you will be kept. You'll be kept. You'll be sustained. And not only will you not perish, you will come out without even the smell of smoke. Why? Come on, help me out. Why? 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 People say, well, it's because God has power. It was his power, but it's not just because of his power. It's because you trusted him. You trusted him. You believed him. No matter what. Hebrews 13. Mm, hallelujah. I haven't preached myself happy. Mm, thank you, Lord. I believe this, do you? Yes. I believe this. I believe Phyllis and I are going to have it good our whole life. I do. Anything we need, we're going to get it. Right? I believe these churches. When I say churches, I'm looking at you. You're the church. A building is not a church. Everybody that comes in and submits under our leadership and, and follows and plugs in and will agree with this, they will be kept too. Yeah. I have a right to use my faith. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. If you'll accept this and believe it, I have a right to believe with you. You will be kept. Your needs will be met. You and your children will be well fed, well clothed, well housed. Let the naysayers fuss while you drive that new car yes. and live in that good house. Yes. But most of all, you will be prosperous and able to do something for the kingdom of God yes. and help advance and help preach his gospel all over the world and help other people to find out what we're talking about right now, that they don't have to live in lack and in pain and in darkness. He will do it for them too. If they just trust him, if they just believe him, simple as that. Somebody say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Father, I trust you. I trust you. Hebrews 13 is New Testament, isn't it? New Testament. And uh, in verse 5. Glory to God. Hebrews 13 and 5. He said, let your conversation, your, your way of life, manner of life, be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, how could you be totally free from any covetousness? And live in contentment and peace. How could you? 
no matter what's going on. For, for, he, God, has said, what? I will never leave you nor forsake you. What's that got to do with being covetous or not? So many times folks haven't made the connection on these things. They separated them. Listen to the Amplified on this. Verse 5. Let your character, moral disposition be free from love of money, greed, avarice, lust, craving for earthly possessions. Do you know why people are covetous and they care too much about stuff and they care too much about money? It comes back to a lack of faith. And why people are willing to do the things they're doing, commit crimes, why in the world would you kill somebody over the $100 in their pocket? Hmm? Why would you steal? Why would you lie? Why would you commit crimes? Because you don't believe you will ever have it any other way unless you steal it or take it. You have no faith and no vision. Hmm? And people with no faith and no vision are dangerous. They'll do anything. But when you know what we're talking about tonight, you quit coveting anybody's anything. Because you are connected to the all source. Hmm? <laughs> Any good thing that anybody's ever had, you could get it from him. Is that right? Any good thing, I don't care how much it cost or how hard it would be to get. You don't have to beg anybody. You know him. I said you know him. And when this becomes real to you, you quit looking at anybody else. You, you, you lose all covetousness. And you can be satisfied knowing you're not going to go through life and miss out on the things that you'd like to have. God's going to take care of me. And if it's something I ought to have and something good, if I don't have it today, I'll get it tomorrow. I'll, it'll work out. And if it didn't come this way, it'll come another way. And I don't have to put any pressure on anybody or pull on anybody. Can you see how you could, you could get free from covetousness and full of peace? Which is what we just got through reading about. Be careful for nothing. And the peace of God that passes understanding is going to keep you. For he, God himself, has said. Who said it? Who said it? God. Who said it? God. Not Paul the apostle. Not, the, not David the psalmist. Not the angel Michael or Gabriel. Come on, help me out. Who said this? God, God himself. I like this. The Weiss translation says, he himself has said and the statement is on record. <laughs> Who said it? God. And it's on record that God said it. What did he say? Come on, help me out. What did he say? What did he say? The, the we says, I will not. I will not. And the reason you'll see, the, the Amplified says that too, because in the Greek, it's, it's repeated. Now, if God says light be one time, that's enough. <laughs> but in dealing with us, he knew... <laughs> Didn't he? he knew how we'd be tempted to wonder about it because it didn't look like that, didn't feel like that, and so and so said. So he said, listen to me. I'm saying it myself. This is on the record in heaven. I will not. I will not. Amplified says it again. I will not cease to sustain you and uphold you. Why would he say it like this? Why? He wants you, he wants me to believe it. Amen. Believe it. How would he know that you believe it? Because you quit coveting. You quit worrying. You quit fretting. Is that right? And you go, ha, ah, I'm set. <laughs> you looking at a made man. I am set for life and beyond. I'm set. 
I got it made. I got it made. I'm set. Oh, so come on, somebody say, I'm set. I'm, 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 set. I'm set. I'm set for life. I'm set for life. Why, why would you say it like that? Because he, God himself, has said. What did he say? Look at, look at the Amplified. Put the Amplified back up there. He, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up nor leave you without support. I won't do it. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you, assuredly not. How much better could you say it? How much stronger could you make it? The problem's not God. The problem's not his ability. The problem's not his will. The problem's not his commitment. What's the challenge? What's the challenge? The scripture said, when the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith in the earth. Faith is rare and precious. It is not everywhere. It's actually, among all the billions on the planet, Real faith in God is rare and precious stuff. Amen. And the eyes of the Lord are scanning the planet. Amen. Isn't he? Yes, he is. He's searching to and fro throughout the whole earth. Why? What does he want to do? What does he want to do? He wants to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect or wholehearted towards him. He's looking for somebody that will say, I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. And when he finds that, there's a glow on the planet. There's a, there's a bright spot down there. There's some bright spots in Sarasota. There's some, there's some bright spots over in Branson. There's some bright spots. People that are joined with us all over the country and all over the world. And the moment, the moment you quit worrying and quit fearing, and quit fretting and start believing and resting, angels go to work. Yeah. It begins to flow to you. God begins to deal with people, bring you up on their mind and their heart and set things in motion. Do you believe it, saints? Yeah. You see it in the Word of God. Yeah. The moment. You don't have to wait till I dismiss. You don't have to wait till you get to the car. You can, if you'll believe this right now, I'm telling you, right now, angels. Spirit of God, Amen. things will start happening. Amen. It's it's all I I just know it by the Spirit of God. It's already in motion. Things, I mean, it, not that God changed. It's been His plan all along. It's just when people start worrying and fearing, it just shuts everything down. The angels fold their hands. Have to wait. Hmm? No more waiting. No more waiting. No more waiting. Stand on your feet, everybody. He, God himself, has said. Somebody say, he said it, he said it, he said it. He, God himself, has said. I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not. I will not. I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down. Come on, somebody say, he'll never leave me. Come on, say it like you mean now. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He will never leave me without support. He will never let me down. Never. He will never turn loose of me. Never, 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 never. never. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then you are set. I said, then you are set. You're set for life. You've got it made. Oh, lift up your hands.